Facebook. Oh, what's going on? What Trying to do terrible do? things. What did you do? Steve? I didn't do. I was not me. Fetching video stream. Processing. Processing. That looks like me. And it looks like we're up on Facebook. Magic Ellie is on and Anya Sarah. Well, hello. Hey, guys. Dan. Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Welcome to Sketch and Scotch. Just a reminder to people if they start watching or listening it, we will be as it says at the bottom the chat will be occurring on youtube uh if you guys want to be part of the chat come on over to youtube otherwise we will not be responding real time to any of the comments or chats in uh twitch or facebook i just can't watch them all so if you want to be part of conversation feel free to come on over Oh, Ascended Minion Project is on. <laughs> Hi, and Poison Stripes. Looking good, guys. I don't know what I'm drawing here. I don't know what you're drawing either. A shoe. It does kind of look like a shoe now. Like an ankle. Oh, a boot. It's a boot that has come to life. Okay, how about I give you your your scoodle instead. Will that make you happy? That would give me direction. That would well, give me something to do in there. boot life. that came to life because you gave it made it all like spidery. Ah, oh, Steve. Steve, no. No. Alright. I eat feet. Very nice. So, Steve, Tonight is going to just be a classic. Okay. It's going to be a saying. When pigs fly. I want you to draw me pigs flying. Cabby's on, but he's, he's lurking. The Stevens are on. Oh, hi. Yeah. So... Yep, that is your arting prompt. When pigs fly, go anywhere you like with it. I wanted to go with something more simple, but I like simple. Very fun. So we mentioned yep. we mentioned last week, but uh, um, I guess it bears repeating. And this is the Stevens reminded me. I ordered way too many of uh, Magic the Gathering battle decks. And they arrived. And they are here now. Did you open it yet? I did. Are you excited? There's tons of them and they're awesome. I think they may have given me more than I ordered. <laughs> so um, so with this Scoodle, what, what we're doing, Steve's got, Steve, well, it depends on Steve. We used to give him seven minutes to draw the Scoodle, but now he just takes whatever time he likes. And then you guys have the whole show. Usually we go an hour. So you guys have until 9, well, a little before 9 tonight, to draw your version of it. And get it digitized somehow. Maybe you'll take a picture with your phone or something. And then you need to find out a way to get a... to post it to our Google um, Doc, which is in the little description in... Uh, YouTube. So in the in down in the little doodly doo description, we have a link to the Google Doc where you can put a link to your picture. 
And tonight's picture that everyone's drawing is, and it's, there's no wrong answers, there's no right answers, but uh, it's when pigs fly. They're all right answers. Yes, I guess that's right. They're all right answers. Oh, Kath BFF is on now. Sean and Carrie are on. All right, people, so that's your scoodle, when pigs fly. So the Magic the Gathering battle decks are, uh, they're, these, they're, they're kind of like stock car racing for, uh, for Magic. They're, they're these balanced out decks that, uh, we haven't actually tried them yet, but we've heard good things and we had them recommended by people who know what they're talking about. So um, for, for folks who want to casually play Magic or people who want to learn Magic, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, um, they're... They're a good place to, or they're a good thing to have because you can, you can just break out some some stuff and play with your friends if they know how to play magic, or if you're going to teach people. Supposedly they're um, relatively simple, relative to magic, because magic is, um, as the folks who who play who are on the stream know, it's uh, it takes a little bit to to learn. It's not it's not your standard game, but. It's actually not that hard once you get the weird little things, um, weird little things down. So when you guys want to learn to play magic, we are ready. Are you ready, Steve? All right. That looks like it's coming along, your little piggy. What's so, everybody else done this week? Oh. Yes, yeah, Steve Sorry, is super excited about his. Uh, Steve is super excited about his um, battle decks. All right. Yeah, I'm excited for the battle decks too, because it's kind of an even playing field for everyone. It'll be fun for noobs and for people who've played a lot. I may try and talk Cat into playing a game or two with me just to test him out. Oh, really? I mean, for science. For science! Oh, uh, Sean and Carrie are starting to pack for moving. Oh, yeah. Um, one of our other sketch and scotchers is, is moving as well. Um, Quiet C. Yep, she's going to be moving soon. Got an awesome job offer and moving to Seattle, Washington. Sorry, not, um, it's not, it's northern Washington, right? Magic Ellie college, said college classes started. She full-time for the first time in 10 years. That's so cool that you get to go full-time. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm, I guess a lot of people are starting school this week. Seems so early. I know, but uh, most people are starting either last week or this week. I miss school. Who else started school? I know, I do too. Who else is starting school? I always, um, I always thrived when I was learning new things and, and growing and such. And I, I, I try and maintain that to some degree as an adult, but it's harder. There's so much other stuff to take care of when you're all grown up. Taylor started on Monday around here. Since we started around here. I wonder when Cat's BFF is starting to So, uh, Sean and Carrie, where are you headed to? I, I know Florida. you told us, but... Yeah, Florida. that's what it was. That's what it was. They're going to Florida. You're going to hang out with Jason Angle. <laughs> and Panda's on. Hey, Panda. Mm. Dan started school, too, because he's teaching this semester at the Life Development Institute. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's cool. And so a lot of people are starting school. Mm. 
Maybe it may be most of the people that did be there aren't answering if they're starting schools because they started school <laughs> and they're not on <laughs> and they're... the stream. Sean says near Pensacola, Florida. Oh, okay. That's the other side of the country, so I actually don't know it very well. It's one of the states we haven't been to. Yeah, yeah. Um... I kind of want to get like a map of the world and a map of the states and like mark all the places we've been to. But I don't want it to be one of the cheap, ugly maps. I want like a classy looking, nice one. Like the one we got from from Isaac. So um, our friend Isaac. Um, oh gosh, yes. He does he does yeah. maps for for yeah, it's upstairs um, in the framing room. He does maps for uh, for lots of folks, um, uh, tour books and stuff like that. Um, he does. And we got um, I wonder if we, could we got show a, it well. a, a map from one of Brandon Sanderson's books. Yes, and he, he does maps for lots of people, but mostly Brandon. He's amazing. I'll try to drive it. And he does like the uh, the alimantic symbols that you guys have, have probably seen, and a lot of the um, the crazy runes and stuff from the Stormlight archives. Uh, yeah. But he gives a map, not of anywhere here, but it's amazing. Cass going to show you because it's, it's the printing is super cool. It's uh, it's cool enough that I'm like trying to figure out what I can, what I could print using the same stuff. Though our metal prints are are pretty amazing, we're we're super happy about those. Okay, I'm gonna try to show this off, Dave. This is our friend okay. Isaac's way out of the way. map. Oh yeah, you can kind of see. You can actually. And I bet you so there's the metal, and you can even texture. see like because I'm showing that you can actually see that texture right there. Yeah, so it's it's um, it's metallic foil, and it's Shh. embossed with like all sorts of textury things. And the names are super beautiful too. It's so nice. I think you and can get them on Brandon's website. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can you can order them. Um, and and like, part of the embossing makes it. Um, the correct term is anisotropic, but I'm I know only some of you have watched enough episodes to know what that is. But it's um, directional lighting, or reflect or. Directional highlights, uh, like a like a like a Christmas ball or like hair, where um, the the highlights go in a certain direction rather than just a spot. It's super cool. I don't know how any how my artwork would translate to that, but it's like I'm keep trying to think what 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 could I do to make the same cool things. Um, so yeah, it was so pretty and so cool. And speaking of metal prints, and Steve was already talking about it, um, Dragon Con. Not this weekend, but next weekend, we will be at Dragon Con. Come and visit us. We are the first floor of the America's Mart building, the very first booth when you come in on the first floor of the America's Mart building. Um, we should put up a map, by the way, Steve. Yeah, I totally should. And then we'll actually, we will, it'll be one of the few places, there's only four places we'll have metal prints. Metal prints are a con exclusive, especially because you have to see them to appreciate them. Um, they're con exclusive and we sold them at uh, Vegas, Gen Con, we're selling them at Dragon Con, and then Salt Lake City Fan X. So those are the only places you can get them. Uh, and they are gorgeous. You gotta come and see them. Save up your money, come by and check them out. They are 220 bucks for one, 420 for two, or 600 for three of them. 
and they are amazing. So come and see us at DragonCon. Make sure you stop by, say if you're a minion, say if you watch Sketch and Scotch, and say hi to us. Mm-hmm. It's going to be so fun. Because minions get free stuff. Yes, minions do get free, free stuff. Free tokens. That's the other thing I did last week is I finished my Patreon reward tokens, um, which I won't most likely have copies of before DragonCon or Salt Lake City Comic Con. Unfortunately. Justin asks, you're not bringing Metal Prince to Luca? No, I am no. not bringing <laughs> Metal internationally. Yeah. We we actually have kind of a skeleton skeleton rig at Luca, with the exception of the first year where we freighted everything out, um, which was a nightmare. Uh, so all we can bring to Luca is what will fit in our luggage, and when you travel internationally, your luggage allowances are much, much lower. So, um, while we still bring as much as we possibly can to Luca, we don't bring those. The other thing is, um, if we don't sell them, we have to get them back. So even um, like having them sent there in the first place isn't a very good option for us. I don't know, maybe we can try. It might be nice to ship some over there. Yeah, I imagine people would, would really like them. And I feel bad that international shows don't get all the things. Um, we, we always try. Like, last year we tried to do the Mythic Signatures, but um, the European Unicorns were uncooperative. The yes. Blood was too thick. Although we banished the unicorns at Gen Con. They don't go over well at conventions. And speaking of that, Howard Lyon is turning over my soul. Yes, to Panda. Panda. Panda is getting shipped Steve's soul. Panda put that all up for uh, four pounds of beef jerky. I think it was more than that, actually. No, it was, was four, it four Still, that's a lot. It's awesome. Panda just yelled on the chat, it's mine! <laughs> Did you see oh, it? Oh! Mini Astroxo is 10 today. It's his oh, birthday. Oh, happy birthday! Happy birthday, Mini Astroxo! That's awesome. Seven, four pounds, seven ounces of beef jerky, to be exact. 10's a good year because you get that, that extra number next year on, on, your, on your cake. Although you might still be doing the one at a time. Once you get to my age, they just do numbers. You get a a number and another number. <laughs> a, uh, a two and a We did five binary outside. for your mom when she started getting older. Yeah, we're nerdy. We did, we did binary. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yes, Panda at GP Vegas made a deal with Howard Lyon for Steve's soul, because Steve, I guess most people don't know the background, Steve traded his soul to Howard Lyon for the secret to the unicorn blood signatures. Mm-hmm. Worth it. I wasn't really using it. <laughs> All right, do you think we're going to do unicorn blood signatures at, at Dragon Con? I think we might be able to at Dragon Con. I think we could. Um... We couldn't. At Gen Con's just too busy. It's like one of our biggest shows. And so we just, we didn't have the space or the manpower to do it. Yeah. I think we can at Dragon Con. There's, there's like this weird happy space where if it's not a very busy show and people aren't that interested in signatures, it's not worth setting up. But if it's a really big show and we're getting too much going on, then it's also not worth setting up because it takes too long um, to do each one. So there's like this happy medium where you need to have a, a show that's just busy enough. Uh oh, Steve, this is uh -oh. th this is this uh, ominous. So Justin uh, asked Panda for the the soul. <laughs> no, 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 no. And Panda <laughs> says, "Nope, I have plans." Oh boy. Uh... I'm afraid. Oh! 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 Is Joe on? Joe is on! Hey, Joe. My spirit animal is on! Everyone, if you haven't met him yet, it's Joe is my spirit animal. I drew a picture of him on uh, Sketch and Scotch a while ago. So. <laughs> I 
Justin says, Steve does not want me to have his soul. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we don't want Panda to have it either. <laughs> See, I knew that Howard wouldn't do anything nefarious with it, but now... Except sell it to Panda. Yeah. For evidently four pounds of homemade beef jerky, which is a steep price, I do admit. I just am sad that we didn't get any beef jerky in this whole deal. I, I actually really some. truly thought about because he keep um because uh, Howard Lyon keeps Steve's soul in a baby uh, baby food jar on his desk. Mm -hmm. And it grew something. Did you see? Yes. I don't know what was that. A little homunculus. Yes. And so what I was gonna do. Is I was going to replace it with another jar because we go there for the portrait painting. I was going to steal it and replace it with another jar and say and and put a note in that jar that says, "We will return the soul in in trade for half the beef jerky." <laughs> but we we're too slow. Yeah. Oh gosh, and it, that's even scarier. Panda just wrote, "Trust me." <laughs> that question mark. I don't know. I just don't know. But yeah, I was gonna hold this little hostage in in the whole transaction, so that we could uh, get some beef jerky. Because Panda's beef jerky really is. 4.7 or 4 pounds 7 ounces of pandas jerky is worth your soul, Steve. I mean, you've Fair had enough. your jerky before. It's totally worth it. So, anyway, uh, and then, so yes, we are doing Dragon Con. Not this weekend, but the next. And then the weekend after that, we are doing Salt Lake City Comic Con. Or, sorry. Salt Lake City Fan X is what it's called. I'm excited for that. Yeah, that's usually a pretty fun show. We're in a different spot if you guys have visited us there before in previous years. Yeah. We used to be right across from Celebrity Row, and I could throw stuff at Alan Tudyk and Patrick Warburton. We are no longer they there. They Celebrity Row. No, it's, it's still where we used to be. It's just... Uh-huh. Oh, we moved it to clear to the end of the hall. Oh, well, for this year, it's... Nope. They put it in oh. a whole different place because they were having problems with the lines. They've had it in a different place for, like, the last three years. Um, the map this year has it kind of back where it was before, oh, it and then a big overflow for lines. Hmm. Um, but we are just past the art show this time. Um... Yep, we're near the artist's alley. Oh, Keeson's back. We haven't seen Keeson in a while. Hey, Keeson. Hey, Keeson. How's it going? The art, um, the scoodle tonight is when pigs fly. And, and I'm sorry it's been a rough month, but hopefully art will make life better. So we can draw when pigs fly. So that's what Steve is drawing. <laughs> Evidently, this is quite the aviator pig. Yes. Fearless aviator pig. He looks so happy to be flying. He's so cute. So, anyway, yeah, uh, what booth was it? Is it 671 Seven, or 761? Seven. 31? Oh. Seven something something. It's a seven in there. Okay. Let me look it up. <laughs> That's what I was working on last week, is getting the exact number. Now I got it. Um, Trying to find it. So close. Seven thirty-one, and we'll be there with Jason Engel and Drew Baker. Mm-hmm. Doing a little artist thingy. 
gonna be fun. Yeah, and we'll do we're doing a panel with that. I don't think that we have found out when or where yet. Um, and we are trying to set up a live painting session. Um, yeah, the closer I sent we get a suggestion to that, back to Blake today. Did I send it actually? Let me make sure I actually no. sent it. I suggested that maybe they just stanching off part of that L, that huge open spot they have at the L. Uh, especially because we want to do it on Thursday night when it's a little less traffic. And, or I suggested maybe out in the um, halls, in the bigger part where you like come and go in the hall, um, in the, the entrance hallway, uh -huh. because that it opens up and they do they have that place for like the cosplay photos and stuff. And that place would be if they just use stanchions, they'd be totally fine to open that up and do an art painting thing right there. Yes, I did send it. So, yay. Um, so we're trying to set up a live painting demo, but we're not sure if it'll be happening. Yeah, it'd be fun, but... But we have no control over whether or not that happens at this point. We've done as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Blake's been awesome and really, really oh, yeah, great yeah. to work with, but it's kind of last minute to set it up. And he's trying to get the whole, the whole show, show ready. set up. So it's a little chaotic. Yeah. Um, and of course, anytime, like at, at conventions, space is at a premium. And we are asking for more space. Um, yeah, it's just that those parts I've never seen booth, them fill you know, those it's... areas. So that's why I'm suggesting those, is because yeah, usually those are just big open areas. We don't want to do it in a separate room away from everything because when it comes to portrait painting, people like to come and go. It's better for something with like a more high traffic area, where yeah. people can kind of wander by, watch for a little bit go somewhere then come back later and follow up on yeah if we had it in a in like a little conference room um what would happen is we would have a bunch of people to start and then the place would be empty 20 minutes later because it's 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 slow right it's not a quick process um yeah it, it's it's a better thing for like you said uh, it's, a higher traffic area where people can kind of come and go yeah you, you come check on it as it goes you don't I mean, some people do sit and watch the whole thing. We had, um, at Gen Con, we had a kid who was, what, 12-ish? Yeah. Um, and he, he was in the front row, and he was just glued to this Yeah, for three and hours. asking questions, like asking tons of questions and stuff like that. He was awesome. Yes, Dan says, is this the start of the two-week drought of sketch and scotch? <laughs> it's going to be more than a two-week drought, so... Um, we won't be able to make it for the next three weeks at all, right? We will either be on a plane or out of the out of the studio or on a plane again. Um, then we have one week to catch up on everything, and then we're gone for the next two weeks. Again, it's just one show, but it's like we're leaving. It's another international show, so we're leaving on a Tuesday, and we're not getting back until following Tuesday. Um, then we have one or two weeks, and then we're gone for three weeks to it's Luca. It's really chaotic for the next couple <laughs> so, months. So, we were going to talk about that. We we may need to put Sketch and Scotch on a, a hiatus until we can get it figured out um, and be regular again. Um, we've also been talking about retooling it a little bit and trying to make it a little more efficient and streamlined. and. Um, and more inclusive for people who can't make it at a certain time every week, right? Um, so stuff like having the um, the Scoodles and the Squam work on a forum on my website where you can post it whenever you, you have a chance. Maybe a forum or maybe a Facebook. Or like um, a Facebook, yeah, a Facebook group. Yeah, where um, people can post up and give feedback more directly. Yeah, so the... 
the audience isn't just the people who remember and can be there and have done the homework and all that, you know, make it more of a, um, you can, you can post it and people could talk about it forever or, or whatnot. And we'll, you know, we would still, um, hop on and, and chat about it, but we would do it. You could do the start just like for the meantime, do the Facebook group and make a Facebook group that people can join. And, yeah. and basically just put up a weekly prompt. You can't paint that brown. Not with the top looking like it is. It'll look like a little poop. Oh. But it's an aviator thing. What about tan? It could be okay, tan, Tan right? is okay, but brown is going to look like a little poop. Okay. Facebook group would be fun. I watched a thing about the Red Baron. It's totally random, but I'm drawing a little aviator guy. Um, and it somewhat relates to... To Sketch and Scotch, did you know that the Red Baron on his first solo flight crashed his plane? One of the f m most famous aviators in a time where planes were tricky. Um, you don't usually get yeah, crashing is... Uh. Yeah, crashing bad, right? Um, but he just <laughs> got another one and kept going. Alright, Steve, so I'm making a group on Facebook. What should we name this our group? This is happening. It's happening what right now. What should we name it? Um, should we name it Sketch and Scotch or should we name it... Should we name it Scoodle or Sketch and Scotch? We also might want to change the name because yeah. we sketch, Scoodle. but we never scotch. Um, we use scotch still, occasionally, not all the time. True. It's branding, Steve. <laughs> it's true. And it's alliteration and that's always fun. I don't scotch on the show because show I always already, see, case in point, have a hard time talking and drawing and thinking and answering questions we call it sketch all and scotch at the same or time. Scoodle. I don't know. We'll, we'll wait to see what people say on the YouTube channel. Yeah, Scoodle. Quiet said sketch, sketch and scotch. Keep the branding. Yeah, it's, it's going to be our substitute one and we can <laughs> basically give a weekly prompt. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that would. That would be easier for me because we always do it at the end of the episode and it's like a think of something right now. Dan agrees, sketch and scotch. Um, the other thing that I've, I've wanted to do for a while and just haven't, like so many things, haven't gotten around to it, is I wanted to do um, little intro drink recipes, you know, because it's a sketch and scotch and there's that, that whole implication, but have them be ridiculous. Like your Zima and and <laughs> oh cheese. Gideon's guilt. Yes, Gideon's guilt is very simple. You uh, you take a bottle of Zima, you mix it with cream cheese, and then you throw it in the garbage and remember Elspeth. <laughs> Most people are saying consistent branding. Keep it sketch and scotch. Okay, it uh, sounds good. Plus, then I still have an excuse to have a scotch now and then. And so... <laughs> Quiet even taught her phone how to spell it. Oh. So yep, quietly, and that is going to be the spelling, is the S-K-E-T-C-H space N. It should be put an apostrophe in there. And apostrophe sketch N. If it'll let you. Okay, well, That's how we usually do sketch it. Sketch N apostrophe. Scotch is spelled S-K-O-T-C-H. Sketch and Scotch. Um, the other thing that we have been talking about is, since we are going to be I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say inconsistent for the rest of the year. Like, we're going to be so um, here and there running around going crazy that um, we're just, yeah. I, we have been thinking about doing pre-recorded episodes in, in the meantime. Okay, next question. Is it going to be a closed group, a secret group, a public group? Um, I almost think maybe closed and then people can ask for permission to join. Because I don't want just trolls on there. I don't like trolls. Yeah, I don't know how Facebook works for... I've never done a group before, so I don't know if it's prone Most to trolls or... Most of my other ones or... are closed and you just have to ask permission to get in. 
and you have uh, administrators who can oversee things. Might be good. Might be good. Because I don't like trolls, and I want to want to kick out the trolls. Yeah, that might be the way to do it. Is <laughs> Justin says he can handle trolls. I know you can, but I don't want to have to. That's my point. I don't want. I I always say this, and I've said it to you, Justin. Don't feed the trolls. I don't want. I don't want it to be a place where we have that because I. That's what I love about Sketch and Scotch. Here is we don't get trolls. Really, we we it's all. <laughs> we've, we've had a few, um, and I was worried that uh, YouTube would be worse. Yeah. But it's, it hasn't been bad. But um, it's it was quick and easy enough to deal with the trolls when they did show up. I'm gonna create a closed group. And I'm going to, it says I have to add at least one friend. You can add me. I'm a friend. Steve. So one of the interesting things um, that you learned in kindergarten that you have to unlearn when you art is coloring inside the lines. I mean, I'm mostly staying in the lines, but um, when you have reflected light bouncing off of things, it spills. And so I'm taking like I'm gonna, the skin, actually suggesting a little people bit like here. It's suggesting poison stripes and carry. <gasps> oh, it knows. I know. And I'm going to... And like here around around him a little bit, I've I've put a little of the sky color bleeding in, mm -hmm. which some of you may remember is because of the Fresnel effect. Ooh, you just gotta get as many nerdy words in to like stack them up when we're gonna be off for a while, don't you? I try and use the word Fresnel as often as I can. Justin has to be on there, and Quiet. I already added you and. Dan. Come on, computer screen. Dan, it's not. I don't know. It's not finding you really quick, Dan. Sorry. <laughs> Someone in here is like, wait, this is Justin? So Justin and, oh, I got to add Panda. And I got to add Ogre. The odd Joe while we're at it because he popped up and he's on tonight. Um. Yeah, Dan, I didn't see, I know that we were on Facebook, but I don't know, is it just Dan Payton? So. I think so. I, I see his posts pretty often. This is another example. Is it Not coloring in the Daniel? lines. Uh, this is from, this, this is mimicking photographic bloom. It's interesting. One of the things is, is you're, um, as you're learning more and more about art and painting and all that kind of stuff, there are, there are um, two things that you start picking up that you that you do differently uh, than maybe. All right, I am not introducing this concept well. So. We are used to seeing things in person and you're used to seeing things in photographs, but neither of them are physically accurate to what is happening with the light and everything. So as a painter, you learn a lot when you study from life because life shows you things that photographs don't. And when you're doing studies, you're paying attention to that sort of thing. So that's awesome and everyone should do it. But you also learn things studying photographs that people are really used to seeing that don't really happen with your eyes but because you see them in photos so often, you come to feel like that's a thing that makes things realistic. And uh, photographic bloom is one of them. Uh, 
your eyes do some similar compensation, but it's not the same. Um, but photographic bloom is essentially just that uh, older, I guess, yeah, digital cameras don't really do it anymore um, mm -hmm. as much. It's different, but it's, it's that um, overexposed bloom uh, where the light and the color are bleeding out mm -hmm. past the edges. Um, it makes the source behind it seem extra bright. Mindy sent a picture of the Stevens kids uh, doing arting tonight. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys could join us. Okay, I created the group. It's called Sketch and Scotch, spelled with the K's instead of the normal. Um, search for the group, and I believe you can request to be added to it, and I will go and do that. Um, yeah, Dan, I know I've, I know I've chatted with you and everything. I just didn't see you on there to add you quickly and easily. So, yeah, we've got a Sketch and Scotch group now. Woot! So excited! Oh, Steve, I don't know if we could, we should talk about it, but I think I'm going to. So another cool thing that we're going to do right after Fanex is um, they have an awesome, awesome dinosaur museum. Lots of them actually here in Utah because Utah has lots of dinosaur bones. And um, we keep wanting to go to the dinosaur museum because... Um, because it's a dinosaur because, museum. Well, and we I want mean, to take our awesome. friends who come out for, for Fanex to the Dinosaur Museum. But the problem is, well, it's cool that Fanex actually is closed on a Sunday. It only goes uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so it isn't on a Sunday. Our friends are still here on a Sunday, but the Dinosaur Museum is closed on Sunday. Yeah. Um, but all the things that we, we want to... So it's... It's getting more well known, but most most shows go through Sunday, and so we'll have folks who come out uh, and just out of habit have bought their tickets for Monday morning, but there's nothing to do on Sunday. So, uh, I mean, there are a few things. Last year we went to the Leonardo Museum, uh, which is awesome, but. We, we really like the Dinosaur Museum at Thanksgiving Point. Yep. Sorry, I stole and your so, thunder. So we work, our friend works there, um, and she set it up so that the artists, so um, Drew, Jason, and Steve, get to go and do a sketching session at the Dinosaur Museum on Sunday. And they're going to trade it for, part of it is the Thanksgiving Point gets to keep some of the sketches that they want. And so it's going to be so awesome and fun for them to be able to kind of do an after hours, um, after hours artist sketching session when there's not people around to get in the way of. I know that most artists, whenever they go into a museum, they really want to sketch, but they don't want to get in people's way. Yeah. And so and or we're, we're there with people that don't want to sit in front of the same thing for however long. But since it's a group of us, we all do the same thing. Um, we we are lucky enough to get to go to lots and lots of museums, uh -huh. and that's always my thing. Is I could bring a sketch pad because I am like I'll, I'll I'll try and find a place to to park and sketch. But then I feel bad because we're always in a group, or, or the thing I want to sketch is popular, and I don't want to be in everybody's way. So the after hours thing where it's just us, that's going to be awesome. Thing I can't decide, maybe you guys can help me, is should I do a bunch of pencil drawings or should I do like one um, oil painted sketch of like a Tyrannosaurus skull or something? Um, I feel like I, I would probably get more out of the experience with a bunch of sketches but there's a lot to be learned doing an oil painting, and that's more likely to be useful to the museum, you know, if they were planning on um, yeah, doing something with it. Yeah, but this is something I was saying to Steve earlier. It, dinosaurs, the, dinosaur bones and bones 
like those I think lend themselves more to sketching and not to a finished oil painting. Yeah. Personal. It's partially because it's just been really into oil painting lately. <laughs> Looking for any excuse to do it. I don't have any of the unobtainium alteration um, orders for Dragon Con. Um, which isn't that surprising, but I've been averaging about one per show. Uh, they're expensive. I don't. I don't blame that more people don't uh, don't go for them. But um, I think I might just do one anyway, because I wanna. It's all gonna depend on whether I get all my other stuff done. For example, the thing that I thought I would probably be working on instead of this pig, which is the I'm gonna finish the angel for wedge. Um, you guys can see how that's coming along. Uh, they are going to try and get the Kickstarter up and running this week, so I need to get this thing finished because it's been a little bit on the back burner. I oh, feel wow! I like haven't that, seen it that far along. It's gorgeous. I like the glowing there. tattoos. Thanks, thanks. I'm going to... It really punched it up. Um, like what you guys have, have seen before, uh, I took what I had before and I added a bunch of notes to it. They're mostly painted in at this point, but that's... Uh, that's how I brainstorm is uh, I'll just take, uh, yeah, the only thing that's that's left that I haven't already painted in from my notes is a little, um, I'm going to have some little drapery things coming down off the, um, the waist here. Um, but I recommend you guys all do this occasionally as you're working on your own pieces. You just do quick little notes that take no time at all and if you're in Photoshop it's easy to do a new, new layer so it's non-destructive and you just try some things. Um, one of the things I tried but ultimately didn't think was quite working was um, I felt like a foreground element might be cool so one of the things that is as like what if she's a freaking gigantic angel and there's like a, a mountain range in front of her um, and maybe there's like some castles or something for scale so that you know it's not just a hill it's, um, you know, and, and you can just, you can just play with little things. You can say, well, that's, that's the nice thing about digital over yeah. oil. Um, and if you don't work digitally, this is what you do in your thumbnails and you can do it on an, uh, a piece that you're further along on with tracing paper. Like it's, um, this is not new to the digital age. This is something that everybody, that artists have been doing forever. Um, because as a picture develops, it changes, right? You can have the most solid drawing in the world, and as you start adding values to it, um, things move around on you. Uh, when I was talking earlier about um, perception versus photography, the other thing is that we have perceptions um, of size and weight dependent on color and value. So when something is a lighter value, you know, it's, it's more, it's brighter, it looks bigger and it looks closer. When something is a warm color, it looks bigger and it looks closer. So when you start adding value and you add color, you, the proportions of your image and the composition, they shift around a little bit. And Sometimes you can compensate for that. Sometimes you just change your drawing. Sometimes as you're going, you realize that it's not doing what you want. Like the focal point isn't where you want it. It's not drawing enough attention or it's drawing too much attention. And um, what experience has taught me is you don't just barrel through and figure out, figure that it's just going to work out. You know, the drawing was solid, so the painting is going to be solid. You you fiddle as you go. You um, like for another thing is you could say, well, you know, it feels kind of empty over here, right? And it does. And I haven't played with that yet. But you could you could put some some little like maybe uh, a whole flock of other angels that are that are flying, um, just to fill some space. Uh, add a little bit of visual interest and a little bit of narrative, right? It's not just her. Um, uh, I could still put something in the foreground here where these... I like these beams. I don't want to cover them too much because then they won't... 
work like they do. Um, but you could, I could still have some, some elements coming through the mist. And one of the things I want to reiterate is this is just quick little doodly stuff. Um, you're not drawing in little angels. I don't even know what these are. I'm just seeing if that makes the composition, you know, like this little, this little thumbnail that's in the corner, does that look more interesting? You know, is there, is there more to it? And then I'll figure out what they can be. Um, these things in the sky, they could be angels, they could be birds, they could be dragons, they could be helicopters, right? All of those things would say something different. And right now, I'm just solving visual problems, right? That felt too empty. I need to do something with that space. Um, something's too bright. Something's too warm. Something's too whatever. Um, that is something you should be kind of looking at as you go. You don't ever have to get something nailed down perfect. You can change stuff for forever, digitally, literally forever. With oil paints and stuff like that, eh, eventually if you have 10 inches of paint, it might be weird. But um, even then you can, you, can, you can scrape it off or you can... But um, don't be afraid to experiment. In fact, always, always, always experiment. Um, don't be afraid to make a mistake because what, that's how you do it. You make a bunch of mistakes and then you start fixing them. Uh, we always end up stealing that quote from the author that there's uh, that, that Dan told us, which is there's nothing more terrified, terrifying than a blank page. Right? When there's nothing there, that's the hardest way to start. Um, so you can put anything down. You can uh, One of the exercises that artists will do is they'll just make squiggles. They'll just make... It doesn't even matter, right? It's just a bunch of junk and then they start looking for things in the junk and then they start drawing um, anyways it's kind of a long tangent for my my notes but um, like one of the this is still here from my notes um, the I decided I wanted to have a little bit of this armor on the wings themselves so there's like some some armor up here and if I wanted to reiterate that there's this wind. I mean, the hair hasn't been rendered yet. It's just suggested at this point, which is um, another thing you do as you're going is you're just suggesting things until you know um, where you're going. And you only put in as much detail as you need. That's something that I still struggle with, but really has taken me a long time to come to terms with this. You don't have to have everything absolutely perfect and absolutely detailed and textured and stuff like that you only need to have enough uh, I still tend to, to weigh heavily on the detail side of things but um, it's not something you you have to do um, And it actually helps your your audience, your viewers, uh, and makes a moodier piece when parts parts come into focus and parts fall out of detail. Um, there are places for your your eyes to rest. This is the way that they like to put it. I don't think that's entirely descriptive. What it is is it's more like a. A lot, of, a lot of composition is the same across creative disciplines, right? Music, um, art, writing, acting, all these things. You don't, even if you really like high action, right? You don't want it everywhere all the time. If you love action movies, there really aren't any good action movies that start with a fight scene and then it's just an hour and a half of car chases, fight scenes, and helicopters crashing into each other. You need space. Uh, in music, you may you may love the guitar solo, but a lot of songs you don't have the whole you don't have it all the same the whole time. High intensity, kick drum, guitar solo. You need um, you need balance. You need rhythm. You need things to go up and go down. In writing, you need you need the 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 drama, the action up and down. Um, it's the same with with visual art. You need places 
that are calm and you need places that have action or detail um, or color or whatever. Um, so you don't need to fill everything all the time. You, uh, <laughs> you, you should, you should kind of think in, in those, those terms of, um, how much do I need to say? What am I trying to say? Am I saying it? Uh, long tangent. I'm sorry. All right. We're getting close to nine. So, and, and it's a school night now. Yes. yes. So, uh, everyone, you've got about five minutes to get your pictures of, uh, when pigs fly digitized and uh, sent and put into the um, we're still going to use the GDoc tonight because that's easy for Steve to get to and link so uh, you need to post it down in the GDoc that's down in the description on YouTube um, I did make and it looks like people have successfully joined the Facebook group that we're going to use in the interim while we for the next couple chaotic weeks or months um, Hopefully there, I'm actually going to be posting every week some sort of arting prompt. Kind of like the Scoodle. Yes. Um, I guess it'll be, it'll be more like the Squam work because you'll kind of have a week to work on it. And post it throughout the week. And people can comment on it. You can even post like works in progress. And um, yeah, I, I know... We could do both. Like I'll do one and you do one. Years of uh, let's Scoodle, just do one that's starting. Work. Yeah, we could do. We could do two. We will try to do two. Yours is the squam work. Mine's the scoodle because mine is your the punishment. <laughs> and so yeah, I uh, will have that. You'll have the whole week to post your pictures and comment on them and everything like that. So, all right, guys, get your stuff. Get it ready. Some kind of um, and if you guys, I've already approved a bunch of people who requested to be on there. If you guys have requested them in the last little bit, um, I just approved everyone who was requesting. Hmm. So I think having a little bit of this, this blue energy stuff in her shield is cool, but it is also a little distracting. So I may, I may think about that a little bit more. Distracting in that it really pulls your attention. And what's going on over there? What's that, what is that? that shield thing? What is she holding? And I don't necessarily want the piece to be about that shield. I, I want yeah, it to be more I almost cohesive. feel like you like should zoom in a little bit. Because I really like her face tattoos. Um, Not a ton. There, there will be some. So um, that, that. this this is going to be uh, in two play map form. two formats. Um, well, actually, I guess more than one. There are two play mat um, formats. Actually, one is going to be twenty four by fourteen, which uh, is still going to be narrower than this. So the likely cropping is going to be something more like that. Uh, maybe a little bit more. And then there's an extra, extra wide where it will be, it'll still be 14 inches tall, but it's 30 something. So it'll be even wider. So I'm, um, I'm working a little, and of course we're going to do prints uh, as well. And those are going to be closer to this original uh, aspect ratio. But I'm, I'm trying to, work just a little bit bigger than I'm going to need so that I have room to crop um, as needed. Uh, one fun thing about working digitally, um, and I will also show you how um, you can do this uh, traditionally. So if my composition is not really working and I feel like I need more space. I mean, it's just the easiest thing ever to say, I'm going to just have more space here. And uh, this is going to be weird, but I usually do it anyway. Um, the content aware fill. Because it, it kind of gets you halfway there, right? It's 
awfully smart for what it what it does. So hey, I got more wings, and I just need to clean up a little bit because it. Um, but if you ever need more space, it's really easy. Uh, and for folks who work traditionally, for drawing especially, um, you can just add paper. Uh, one of the one of the best sketcher pencil drawing, well, and everything else, but um, Ian McCaig is a concept artist who has, he's the guy who designed Darth Maul. Um, he's done everything in Star Wars. He worked directly with George Lucas forever. He goes, he's, he's one of the guys who teaches other film concept artists how to, how to do it and everything. He's, he's amazing. But um, he'll, he'll start sketching and then he'll just like tape paper to paper as he as it gets bigger and bigger um he like running out of space or getting too close to the edge um you start so <laughs> slight tangent but related uh -oh. the for, for any given composition including when you're doodling and sketching and stuff like that the the most important lines the most important edges the most important part of your composition are the edges of of the piece right the, the border the frame and if you're if you're sketching and you're getting too close to that border you will start cramming things in and crowding things and trying to just fit it in there because that's that's the edge of the world right that's the ultimate boundary you never go past that and you start to compensate so if you're ever getting anywhere anywhere close add paper so that you don't compensate because that's gonna that's going to mess up what you're trying to do. Uh, so anyways, um, it's probably time for... Yep, I just sent the two, the two Stephen kids um, uh, sketches to you awesome. there, right there. So. All right, so squamork first. It's squamork from Dan. What was your squamork topic? It was the um, time travel. Um, what? Everyday uses for time travel machines. No, that was the one from two. Oh, you're right. What was last week's? Welcome back to Jewelry Television. It was entering... villain. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Villain. Super villain binges. Yes, super villain <laughs> binges. That was it. That's what it was. Welcome back to Jewelry Television. We are entering hour 27 of the Clock Ring Extravaganza. <laughs> that uh, is pretty witty to have gone watching Jewelry Television. Home Shopping Network. Nothing will ever quite replace his precious, though. Or his body that burned in the magma, so... And by the way, uh, Carrie and Sean said they liked the detailing on the shield. What I was going to say about the detailing on your shield in mm -hmm. one picture is that it brought out the tattoos in her face. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the thinking, is having a recurring um, motif of these little glowing glowing runes. I feel like it. I like the, the concept, it's just a little too strong right now. Like, it's, it's pulling a little too hard, and um, I will... I will think more about that, but uh, but I, I agree. I think it's it's interesting, and uh, I'm fairly confident I can figure out how to make it work. I think it's Carrie. You said after the move, I might get brave and start sketching with you all. You should absolutely. You're now on the the sketch and scotch group. It's a great place to start, and don't be. We've said this before. Art makes life better. I don't care what level you're at or what anything like that. You should never feel bad about your arting. You just need to, just just art. Um, art like no one's watching. Yeah. All right, and this one is Super poisons. Villain binges by poisons dives. The news. 
frightening other news that it's a little bit hard to read. Said. Uh, but the Joker watching the news is so watching, damn funny. Yes. The, the Joker binging on news. I love it. The Joker. That would, is pretty great, Joker and I like delight. how he's just like laughing his head off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> He would totally binge on horrible, horrible oh, yes. news stories. Thank you. That's wonderful. All right. All right. Then for Scoodles. Here's Dan's. The Scoodle, Scoodle topic was when pigs fly. <laughs> oh, I just got that 70 million from Nigeria. <laughs> So, and again, when it comes to, this is the thing I love about giving people prompts, is they come up with totally different ideas. So his prompt when pigs fly is something that would happen when pigs fly. Oh, I just got that 70 million from Nigeria, and I love it. Totally different direction, and less literal, and I love it. Yep, and Anya put it in here. We are always learning a little more. Art is art, and if you're drawing and painting, it's already great. Um, Steve's mom has been arting recently, and I asked her a question, basically, I was like, I, I asked her, you know, she, she was all paranoid about it, I said, did you enjoy it? She said, yeah. Said, did you learn something? Said, yeah. Then what more? Like, that's the biggest thing you need. So this is, um, this is Cicely's, I believe it's I a, can fly, <laughs> splat. It's a whole narrative. She made you a comic strip. Yeah. A story. <laughs> it's a little dark, but I love it. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Splat. Now he's and dead, now, and so he can fly. And now he can. <laughs> Cicely, that's great. Thank you. That's and, awesome. and Mindy, thank you for letting the kids stay up uh, past bedtime. Yes. On a school thank night. You. I know I do this kind of late. She was teasing me. She's like, uh, pigs are flying right past bedtime. I believe that's how she put it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that makes me laugh. Thank you, sis. That's wonderful. That's this awesome. was Taylor's. <laughs> Guess he's gonna finally fly. Oh man. <laughs> Chops it. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. And you took out the other pig while he's at it. I like the fire. <laughs> yeah. Make sure to go. And did you see the stipple on this one pig? Yeah. He did stipple shading. Very cool. And actually, the thing I'm most impressed with on this one is that close-up on him cutting the catapult with the axe. <laughs> yes. See, the one pig is trolling him, like calling him a noob and saying he couldn't fly. So... Guess what happens? Not you, mate. Lol, noob. Yep. Totally trolling. Come up and That's what happens to trolls! <laughs> That's awesome. So that is Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> I like it. I like the color he added in and the stipple. It's a powerful catapult, too. Yeah. I think he probably like had jet, like secret jet engines on there to be able to go that fast. That's pretty crazy. That's an intense pink. Here we have pandas. Panda <laughs> Airlines first Robert, class. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Um, Robert the Viking says he endorses this handling of trolls. <laughs> the the. The catapulting through them. Wow, that's a fancy little pig. Yes. Oh, and it's got two first class because uh, Party Mouse has got his own his own ticket two tickets, too. Tickets, yeah. See, and Party Mouse is cool like that. He's got his own seat. And first, ah, oh, yeah. I would totally use Panda Airlines. Mm -hmm. Oh, me too. Yeah, the inside meals would be amazing. Uh, 
All right. So that is so awesome that we, we're happy to have. Um, by the way, the uh, Stevens <laughs> kids are new. Uh, they were on last week, and then they drew the, for the first time this week. So awesome. Keep arting. Oh. This is Enyo Saras. <laughs> Super pig, super bacon. Is that his? Because it means I like his symbol is bacon. It's like really cute with somewhat dark implications. <laughs> because it's super bacon. <laughs> awesome. Uh, that's great. Super ham, super bacon. That, that does have, uh, yeah, that has all sorts of implications. But he's flying and he's a pig. I like the cloud. If I in the ever background. went vegetarian, I think that I think bacon would be my kryptonite that would always bring me back. <laughs> all right. That is awesome. <laughs> and poison. I like his wing too. Poison's next. It's just not letting me get to it. So I, th I think I actually accidentally dragged it in the spreadsheet rather than selected it. Oh, that's so cute! <laughs> he has a friend. That's how he flies. Yes, you get the big eagle friends. See, I love that in Lord of the Rings, watching those eagles come and pick him up off the top of the tower. It's like I want to fly on one of those. Yeah. That, that pig's got friends in high places. <laughs> I see what you did there. I'd like to have an eagle friend that flew me around places. Although I think this could turn out poorly for the pig. If they go too far and that eagle gets hungry. Yeah, it really could be one of those scorpion and the frog kind of uh, scenarios. Hop on my back. I'll take you where you need to go. Definitely not to my nest full of hungry little eaglets. <laughs> Definitely not there. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. Warrior pig. Charge! Uh oh. <laughs> when pigs fly, is Steve drawing a horse? We have to wait till they can see it. It's not oh, up yet. sorry. I totally ruined it. It was on the other screen. Whose is this one? This is Asteroxa. Oh, of course it is. When pigs fly, and it's Steve drawing, it's an altar on Liliana the Veil of, of, of a, it looks like a horse, Liliana. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's you drawing it. See, he's even got the Copics. So you, you got a horse altar at GP Vegas. Yes, it was a, a, a uh It was Picasso. a Picasso horse. It was Picasso the Guernica horse. horse. Along with how that horse felt about being a horse. <laughs> Signed by uh Pablo Dali. <laughs> uh, no horses. <laughs> awesome. Yes, I like that the, the total detail of the Copics and everything. And see, I wouldn't put it past you to get this altar with the exception of that's a really expensive card to do that to. <laughs> I think I am going to try and do one, one unobtainium oil painted alteration before Dragon Con. I don't know if I will. Are you going to finish I've the one over there? It's the, oh, the diva? Yeah, yeah, yeah the diva needs to Get finished. So you remember we started the diva. It was. Does that mean you're gonna do two? Maybe. That might be you guys should see. It's them. not. It's no one. You're done. But it's so pretty. I want Steve to finish it. Yeah, you guys. I I don't remember if I did any of the actual painting on the stream. But, but he did the but sketch for it. The like. Here's where it's going. And so that's where it's at right now. It's gonna have Doritos and Mountain Dew. So. That is one of the unobtainiums that will hopefully be available at Dragon Con. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a little hand painted oil altar. Yeah, I 
I usually don't have even enough time to really get through the ones that I, uh, the pre-orders that I take. But Dragon Con, Dragon Con, we, we've kind of cultivated a crowd that, um, the first year I came, I had a bunch that I pre-did. The second year I came, I had a bunch of blank cards that, um, I, I did one night when I had insomnia. So, Dragon Con is used to me just having them there to pick up. Like, you don't have to wait in line or whatever. You just say, I want that one. Um, so we don't get as many of the pre-orders, which gives me a little spare time. So I, I don't feel bad about that one bit. Um, so yeah, and if they don't sell, we'll probably throw them on the website for sale because people do ask about that a fair bit. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe one thing that we can also ask people now that they've done their is that that's our last scoodle, right? I think so. Did I miss anybody? You, you got poison stripes, so we're probably good. <laughs> um, if you guys want, go put your scoodles from this week onto the new little sketch and scotch uh, board, uh, sketch and scotch Facebook yes. group, and more people can comment and talk about it. And so yeah, there's all of the. We, we will work in a Sketch and Scotch group for the next uh, little future because, like I said, we're going to be out for at least the next three yeah. weeks, if not longer. Um, so the Sketch and Scotch Facebook group, it's called Sketch, S-K-E-T-C-H, space N, the letter N, apostrophe, space, Scotch, S-K-O-T-C-H. That's our little Facebook group. Um, it is a closed group, so you'll need to just request an invite. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, come on over and join us. That uh, we'll do a weekly prompt, and uh, then you have like the whole week to post whatever you're two doing. Two weekly prompts. We're gonna try to do two weekly prompts. One from oh, me, me and one from Steve. And uh, you'll people will be able to draw and post up their stuff. Yes, it I'm excited. I think this will be a good. A good resource for us all. Yes, and we'll see how that works and, and how that works into the overall feel of things. And Dan already posted, changed the banner in the background. I told him it'd probably change to something that's your scoodle. But uh, Dan got yeah, it and changed it. I'll put something together for it. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, we'll see. We'll see you eventually. I mean, I, well, hopefully, we'll see some of you at but, Dragon Con yeah, or we'll Fanix. Mm -hmm. And we'll hopefully see you on the Facebook group where we'll um, we'll try and keep things going a little bit. Well, and in this way, like I actually feel like I'll be able to participate more. I might mm -hmm. actually be able to do the prompts. Yeah, and I, I feel like we'll be able, like the community will be uh, a little bit. It'll be easier for everybody because. Most people can't can't make it right now, right? It's it's late. It's also um, you know it's a very specific time, and uh, I, I applaud folks like Robert the Viking because um, he's in Sweden and it's like four in the morning there. No, he's in New York right now. Oh, that's right. You're here and you're spending Even time then, on exactly, our stream. Awesome. Yeah, so he's in New York right now. Yeah, so. I and I knew that. I've been watching your your Facebook. Uh, your endeavors. Yeah. Looks like you're having fun. Oh wait, maybe he, he says it's five twenty, so maybe he did oh, home now. Are you home? Okay, well. I don't know. But Robert got to. He actually came over to Gen Con. Yep, he got home yesterday. Ah. <laughs> he came over to Gen Con and hung out with us at Gen Con right? and then toured around the Eastern United States. And I guess he just got back home yesterday. Oh, I hope you had fun. In our quirky little country. Consular Diamond says, what degrees did you get to learn your art? None. A failed chemistry degree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, three years of a chemistry degree. Um, and one semester in art after that. In which the teacher that. told Steve, you'll never make it as an artist. Yeah. Stop trying. Yeah. Uh, had um, a, there was an interesting article I saw recently, and I'll, I'll kind of maybe leave on this. Is um, it talked about 
a large, large number, percent of adults had uh, an experience they can distinctly remember where someone um, did something like uh, hurt them, made a comment that hurt them creatively and damaged them from continuing to art. And, um, and it, well, or it, it just said creatively. It mm -hmm. wasn't just artwork. Right. And it really hurt that continuing creative process when they were in their formative years, in their teenage years. And so um, that's the biggest. It talks about rules, and I might put some up on Sketch and Scotch, but the biggest thing uh -huh. is, is there's no wrong. Everyone's at a different place in their artwork, and so be supportive of everyone. Um, and art makes life better. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. no matter how you want to art, uh, I, I just love, I love people coming together here and practicing mm -hmm. and playing around and posting and having fun, because that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it made me think that the creativity one about that, if Steve had listened to that college teacher. Then I would be working at McDonald's. But luckily, it pushed him in a different way, and sometimes people have the reaction of, oh, yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, I kind of had that, well... <laughs> I don't think you're... I, you've always been a... You never stopped arting, and you've yeah. been, always been a talented artist because you've been arting continually your whole life. And I feel like the teacher just said that be, just to be mean and petty. Um, but it yeah. did push you. And I would love to send that article to that teacher because <laughs> I, I feel like an art teacher especially should never, ever say something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. And this, to this an was art a foundation. Yeah, this was, this was foundation art. This was the first thing that you're supposed to take if you want to. It's, it's even before you can, you can choose the art program that they had. Um, so, it's, like, he even said, like, opening day, the point of this class is just to experiment do a bunch of different things and um it's it was like pass fail participation kind of stuff you you got points if you did the thing didn't matter how well it was done uh yeah. dan says he had a troll in his very first book that was so bad that he stopped writing for five years and almost gave, oh. up, gave up um again people aren't going to be the very best when they're starting out but you can give there's a difference and this is something i encourage people to learn is constructive criticism versus trolling and i think that people are losing the nuance of that where yeah. it's like this is great this is working this is working what about trying to push it in this direction what about trying to work on shading here what about this and that's um people also need to learn how to take criticism a little but uh what we're hoping for in the sketch and scotch is mostly positive comments and mm -hmm. more constructive criticism Mm -hmm. um, also, have a sense of humor about things. Someone might say something, it might fall flat. We can gently rebuke people, but let's not get in... I, I don't want drama. And that's the thing I also love about uh, Sketch like and Scotch. I like how it says fingerprints on it. <laughs> that's nice the other touch. thing I love about Sketch and Scotch is there's never been drama. We don't get drama. And I don't want drama. So that's my other thing on the Sketch and Scotch board. No drama. You guys work stuff out. And, and just be, don't forget to be awesome, I guess, is actually probably going to be my rule. That's a good rule. Good rule. And yes, I do like the fingerprints in, <laughs> in Copic, or it looks like the Copic like, peed all over it. I, it's the paint markers. I get the paint markers all over my fingers, and, mm -hmm. and then they... I'm getting better about not leaving fingerprints on people's cards, and I hey, can clean them off now. Hey, it's like your but, signature, dude. But there are, there are a few. The... the um, the artist proofs that I sketched, they were more notorious for that. That's why they were, that's why they're named Black, Black Thumb, Thumb Sketches, is because for the first dozen or so, I could not avoid getting a thumbprint on it somewhere. See, and Ellie was told, um, girls don't do science. And see, don't tell people they can't do yeah, science. Yeah, that's... Especially because then they'll come back and crush you. <laughs> Yeah, well, we we all have a, we all have a single perspective, a single life, which is a, a limited opportunity, and you should do what you want with it. You should you shouldn't um, 
be afraid to be yourself just because somebody's going to be a jerk because people are going to be jerks. They're just out there. And yep. um, the sad part is a lot of them are jerks because people were jerks to them. It's this they're cycle of abuse. People are jerks to them or because they're not being successful. Um, the opposite to creation is that destruction and downplaying. And it's a sad opposite because you'll find a lot of these people who are trolls and pulling people down are people who just aren't creating. They're not creatives. They, they're, they're tearing down creatives just because they, aren't, they can't create or they feel like they can't create. So we would rather, much rather have you be a creative than a destructive person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, we're not worried about anybody in the Sketch and Scotch stream. You guys are all great. I've always loved how we've been. And whenever the, there's even been little, like, someone said something and another person was a little offended by it, the other person was quick to, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And, and yeah, just sometimes it's awesome. just a misunderstanding or, yep. or something like that. Or all of us have had that moment where we say something and it's like, foot in mouth, whoop, and <laughs> yeah. just be the person that can stand up and admit that you did that instead of double down. So, yeah, I love it. And I am excited for our little group. Yeah, I, I have high hopes too, because more people will be able to participate and things won't be um, lost as, as quickly to the sands of time. Cool. Well, um, I think we're gonna go then, and and not eat cookies because we're on no, a we're on a nutrition plan. plan but I have sugar-free Jello and sugar-free pudding, Steve. Well, then we're gonna have sugar-free Jello and sugar-free pudding. Is what's gonna well, happen? One or the other. Okay. I already noticed there's decision. some of my sugar-free Jello, uh, the pudding. You said they gone. were treats for us. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah. Stay tuned in the in the new group for. And we'll, that's where we'll put your new schoolwork. That's where we'll put the schoolwork. Uh, do you want to announce it here and then we'll put it on there? I haven't thought of one. So I I should just put it there. Oh. I'll, I'll think of it and I'll put it there. Oh, uh, that's a tease. No, no, see, Steve, it's the tease. We want yes. you to go see that group. You need to check the group for your schoolwork. Yes. Anyhow. Um, thanks for coming, guys. Heart, art makes life better, heart and so do you. Better. We love all of you, and we'll see you guys around. Yep, stay tuned in the Facebook group, and if you haven't joined it and you're watching this later, join it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.